Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Storm, and once again, I'm playing Danganronpa. Sorry if you hear something weird in the background. That's the air conditioning going. Uh, if you hear something else besides the game on me talking, that's the air conditioner. So, sorry about that. But anyway, hey, there's Aoi. Let's talk to her after hearing that something disturbing has apparently happened. Aoi, you didn't kill anyone, did you? I knocked on all the doors, but nobody answered. Did they all go to see what happened? Oh, then what about the second floor of the school? Oh, that's a good question. That's the only place that's new to all of us, so it seems like the natural place for... That's a good point. Let's go see. Um, let's see if anyone else is actually here first, though. I doubt it, though. I think everyone probably is upstairs. Oh, God, this music, man. No, oh, Jesus! Just the way it just, it just follows you. Just the way this game is structured. Why is everyone always caught? But I don't. It's an interesting aesthetic, but like it's just the way they sneak up on you like that and the way it. It's just weird sometimes, is all. <coughs> There's. Yeah. That's your hero. Yo! Hey, Makoto. Honestly, what do you think? Uh huh. About what? Cat, do are you do you ever paying attention? Every time someone asks you an obvious question, you always huh? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Like Jesus, man. Are serious? About Byakuya. You think he's being brainwashed or what? I I don't know. You know more about that kind of thing than me, right? Huh? What? What's that supposed to mean? Aren't you a fortune teller? Well, I mean, you're some kind of psychic, right? Hey. Listen, Makoto, I think you've completely misunderstood what it is I do. Okay? Listen, fortune telling is like... Well? It's totally different from brainwashing or, or hypnosis or anything of that pseudo-scientific book. Oh, but fortune telling is, is totally real, though. Uh. I need you to understand that. So you expect me to think fortune telling isn't pseudoscience. Sorry, but I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going upstairs right now. I just want that music to stop. Oops, I keep forgetting that. You have to actually click on it. There probably are, are other students somewhere else around in, in the rooms or something, but. Oh boy. So, who is it this time? Oh, the library? Yeah, let's see. Biaki is always here. Yeah, speak of the, speak of the devil. Hmm. There's something here of interest, don't you agree? I don't know, I haven't looked yet. You should go somewhere else. Oh, fuck you! You just want to stay here by yourself. Just annoying. I don't know, an empty classroom, I guess. Reality isn't everything. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. I need to write Assassin's Creed. Is this no classroom? 2A. The baby is sleeping. Please be quiet. You know what? I just realized. Maybe. Yeah, the pool. I'm actually really uneasy right now. Huh? Oh, there's something here. The door's open, but the, but these aren't supposed to... Why well, aren't these supposed to be locked? Right now. For this investigation, I have unlocked the doors. Please look around to your heart's content. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to go into the girls' locker room. 
Investigation? It's all clear now. Just as I thought. Byakuya. I see. Judging from what he just said, there could be no doubt a murder really has taken place. Why are you smiling? Come on. In the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? On what grounds? What are you talking about? Uh-huh. Suspicious? Yeah, I agree for once with them. When they, and to what extent? <laughs> it seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Mm, excuse me. It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker. That's an excellent idea, Byakuya. He was muttering as if talking only to himself. Maybe he is deranged. Without waiting for a reply, he pressed his hand against the girls' locker room. Well, locker room door. And the door swung open without a sound. In that moment, time seemed to freeze. Okay. I'm betting either Toko or Chihiro. Maybe Sakura? Oh, let's see. I mean, it could be a guy too. I don't... Let's see. Who is it? Bloodlust. What? I don't know how long it took me to fully comprehend the reality of what I was looking at. But as soon as I did... A wild, almost primeval scream escaped my mouth. Escaped from my mouth. Oh man, I, took, I picked the wrong, the wrong time to end the previous episode. I keep doing that. I tried to suppress my screaming, but it was useless. It surged of my phone. It surged out of me like water from the spring gushing out of the ground. Byakuya, on the other hand, very strange. Most unusual, don't you think? What is your problem, dude? He was totally calm. Almost like he was watching this all unfold in front of a TV screen. Look, Chihiro's corpse has been suspended somehow. What do you mean, somehow? Am I looking... Looks like she was hung or something. Something's been written on the wall in blood. Bloodlust? Hmm. Such a brutal way to kill someone. No, this is beyond brutal. Wouldn't you agree? Shut up! They killed her. How could it not be brutal? Hmm. No, that's not my point. This murder is far too bizarre for any everyday for any everyday amateur to have committed. Committed. It. You are absolutely right. With Sayaka, it was a I said before, it was a heat of the moment situation for Leon. Because she tried to kill him, so he just struck back. But yeah, he's actually right about this. Oh god damn it, this this fucking calm, cool personality right now is uh, he's looking at the whole thing logically. And that, that's annoying to me. But, he, but yes, he is right. This is far too... Yeah, it's far too elaborate, far too bizarre for any everyday amateur to have committed it. Unlike with Sayaka, this murder was not a crime of passion or necessity. It's almost, a, it's almost as if he really did this. Did it for fun. You see what I mean, don't you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so back to what Monokuma said in that dream theater. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> Dream Theory is a heavy metal band, if you don't know. Um, there's a difference between, oops, I killed him, and, yeah, I killed him. What fuck are you gonna do about it? So I guess that's the, I guess that's what we're looking, looking for this time around. Someone killed her for fun? Was it you, Byakuya? Did you kill her? And then try to, try, try to cover up your tracks? What? 
my head was swimming. I was still reeling, reeling, too confused to understand what he was trying to say. And before I could even begin to clear my head... What the heck? Hey, I heard screaming. Did something... <laughs> Chihiro... Ugh, what does he want? A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! Oh boy. Here we go. What the hell was that? What? Ah, that's right. You were unconscious during Sayaka's, so you don't know about it. Wait, what's going on? We just heard was the body discovery announcement. Apparently, when three more people discover a body, an announcement plays to let everyone know. I imagine so that the search for the culprit can proceed fairly quickly for everyone involved. Proceed fairly? Fairly quickly, he said. The body discovery announcement. The Chihiro really is dead. Yes. D before you start screaming your head off, go round everyone up. It seems another game has begun. Another life or death game to uncover a killer. Taka bolted out of the locker room. As everyone made their way to the scene, it felt as if no time had passed at all. No time at all passed. What is up with the way I read things? Jesus. It was like my sense of time had just taken wing and flown away. When I finally came back to myself, I saw everyone had the same look of, of confusion, fear, and anger. We all just stood there, gathered around Chihiro's body. Damn. Just glowing. I couldn't keep her safe. So there's another victim. But he's losing it. <sighs> Which means we are now in the same position once again. Fuck, man. What the, what the fuck is this? It's a dream. If this is a dream. It's all just a dream. In fact, I haven't even been born yet. I don't have any memory of ever being alive. Dude, just be quiet, please. Sh exactly. Oh boy. Can't talk to anyone. Except the Akira, I guess. Oh no, the bloodlust sign. The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. So I don't think it's any kind of dying message. No clearly it, it isn't. It's just too strange. But you know, the thing about writing bloodlust in blood doesn't it sound kind of familiar. Well, what do you mean? Psycho. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written on the victim's own blood. I don't. I do. I really don't remember this part. I can go inside this room and see the words the police can catch up to me. I don't remember this part. I, I really don't. And what again did the, did, did, did the internet? Oh wait, you know what? No, I do remember now. And what again did the internet give this to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. Yeah, I do remember now. Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the murderous fiend whose whose grisly attacks were all fam were famous all across the country. The ultimate murderous fiend, creating a reputation of abnormal, downright, downright cruel killings. What is this? Then this is some copycat killer trying to imitate Genocide Jack's style? But why would anyone do that? Hmm. Perhaps it's the work of the real Genocide Jack. That's all I was thinking. What? The real... Wait, are you saying Genocide Jack is here in the school? No way! There, yeah, there's... No. I... I won't put it past this game. If any of the students here actually are Genocide Jack, then I'm guessing Monokuma knows this for a fact, and it specifically tried to get them here. 
For going so far as to write bloodless at the scene, I am surprised at their stupidity. I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. What is it now? Toko! Hina was pointing toward the entrance to the girls' locker room. Yeah. Toko was the last to arrive, and now she was just standing there. No! Why? 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 Can't scream that right now. Um. Her head, her, her, her. They look like tentacles. Hmm. Oh. She fainted. That did not sound good. Toko! Hina rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started trying to shake her awake. Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up! Oh, that's right. I just remember what she said about how she faints in time she sees blood. Did she say that? I don't remember that. Oh. So she's hemophobic? I imagine she does not want to she does not watch too many horror films then. I guess not, Celeste. What what does it matter? Uh, um This isn't a violation of, of of the rules, right? I mean technically she's passed out somewhere besides her room. No, I think it should be okay. The regulations prohibit sleeping. Like on purpose. Hmm. Ah, since so, so she didn't think on purpose, it doesn't got it doesn't count. Gotcha. Just a second. What does that matter? Why does that matter? Ah, I keep I keep forgetting people's names in this game. Toko, can you hear me? Hey, you gotta wake up. As if she'd heard her. Toko suddenly shot awake. As as in she literally jumped up from where she was still laying. It's such a strange reaction. I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. The hell? In no time flash, she was just standing up. With a very nice Ohago face on. Ugh. Ignoring the physical contortions she had to go through, her emotions were totally haphazard. Huh? What? Sorry about that. I was I was just so shocked, you know. It happens, right? Was I the only one? Toko? Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Whoa! Is that a dead body? Hey. Are you dead? Jesus. Okay, my money's in Toko for being genocide jack. She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. <laughs> the world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. No, no, everything's fine. At least the stutters are all gone. Hold for a second. My damn phone keeps going off. Okay. That's a good thing, right? I see. It's clear to me that everything is not fine. Your eyes seem strangely vacant. Mm. It might be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. So, um... I don't mind taking her back. I don't mind taking her, but could someone help me? Mm -hmm. If you need, if you need help, I don't mind. Hi. Taka, could you help me? Exactly. Good going, are we? Huh? She totally ignored me. Yeah, for a reason. Very well. You take you take you take care of the girl, and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. Can I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura and Mondo on guard duty? Hold on a second. Rushing to an investigation? The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. Don't make me repeat myself. And there was no question that Shihiro was murdered by someone among us. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Of course. Yep, there he is. Right as rain. But I'll take it as a bad thing. It's just a fact of life. Because... Yahoo! That's how graduation works! Uh, uh, just gruesome. Then... 
It's happened again. Please. Makoto, please stop. Is that what you're saying? That another one of us? Yes, is what he's saying. Another one of us killed. As this keeps going on, I, I, I like Makoto less and less because he just, he just repeats everything that happens and he just seems just to not pay attention to what's going on. I mean, far would be for me to to call the kettle black, but dude, it's happening to you. How are you not paying attention? A fellow classmate? No. What? Does that freak you out? You guys got no balls. You know that? Is there just nothing down there at all? Well, I'll let you pray to my. To, well, I'll let you pray to mine if you want. Gee, ugh. Actually, I don't have any either. Sorry. Stop talking. Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? I sure did, chum. Allow me to present the next Monokuma file. I know how much you must be looking forward to it. See ya later. So please do your very tippy top best on this investigation. No way! Do we really gotta do another investigation? Examining the corpse of one of our friends. Having to suspect all our other friends. Why? I hate this. I can't take it anymore. Oh, no! I hate it too. I I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. Hey. Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run. Such ignorance. Just accept it already. After all, blood is just a liquid. A dead body is a simple op. Byakia, can you please say less things? <laughs> Are you a very enthusiastic about all of this, are you not? Naturally. How can I not be? If we don't unmask the culprit, we all die. That's true, but to jump into it so soon... What? What? Do you want to die? Such ignorance. Fine. They go up and die somewhere. Right now, go ahead. You're, you're a waste of space. D damn you! A dead body is an object? Piece of shit! Jahira wasn't an object. Show a little respect or I'll beat some into you. Calm down. Everyone stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Byakuya said. Kyoko? Because... If we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Byakuya is right, that Genocide Jack is someone... is somehow the one who killed Chihiro? That's right. Then unless we do something more victims... Unless we do something, more victims can start piling up. Forget more victims. If we mess this up, we're all dead meat. Hold on, hold on. If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer. What are you talking about? In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. Two people? Okay, that's great, so someone else can die too. <laughs> what? I don't remember any rule like that. Actually... I just came up with it. Of course you did. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? Got it. Got it. So then. In that case, why not limit it to one person? Hey, um. Well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out on at least the potential of a serial killer angle. <laughs> Just one would totally murder that possibility. Ugh. Punishment is waiting for you. Farewell for now. I'll catch you guys at the class trial. I can't say I understand his thinking, but if we can kill up to two people, then one one person's life could still be in danger. Hmm. Interesting. Which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. You son of a bitch! You need to shut the fuck up! So, um... Well, for now, Taka and me are gonna drop Toko off at her room. Mm. Nice. Mm. I'm gonna get dropped off. There is nothing to be done. We have no time to stand around here. We must begin our investigation too sweet. If we do not solve the mystery of who killed Chihiro, Is that okay? then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. And that's true. I hate this, but if I want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choice. Investigate. 
First of all, I better check the Mon Monokuma file to see exactly what's going on. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. That's all it says. Well, it's not like there's any point in complaining about it. No matter what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Oh, got a bullet. Monokuma file number two is my added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Hmm. Hey, Makoto. Do you have a second? No. Huh? Did you need something from me? Naturally. Of course. Life without purpose is quite dull, you know? Um, so... What did you need? <laughs> I'm going to let you cooperate with me during my investigation. Oh, thank you, Master. I'm so glad that I can be your underling during this just traumatizing time. Huh? What? I'm purchasing your talent. The same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. Solve? Uh, no, Stop I just... Talking. You seem to have some limited use, which is why I've chosen you. Yeah, the honor of contributing to my investigation. Dude, go fuck yourself. So, you invite me to come with you. You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible, though. Let's go. Now then, shall we get started? But we need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. I don't really know what just happened. It looks like I'll be working with Byakuya on this one. I guess. I use this locker room all the time. Now, I'm just gonna set up Chihiro's death. This locker room all the time? Like, it's only... How many days have we been here now? How many days have, 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 have passed since getting access to the, to the second floor? But why would she kill in the locker room? Actually, think about it. She could have been killed somewhere else and then carried here. Hmm. She was very light, that is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her, but still. I still think she came here on her own, by choice. What makes you say that? Mm. She's been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. Yes, I remember. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Was she really been exercising that late? Perhaps. Hina and myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she's probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it? <clears throat> Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead she came to exercise in the middle of the night? However. Perhaps. It was difficult for me to imagine she would come alone. She didn't want to ex start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. She was saying she could have come here in the middle of the night to train in secret, but that she would, but that she also would come with someone else. Or she would have come with someone else. It's a possibility, I think. Hmm. Sakura's account of the exit. Hmm. It's an interesting take. Mondo? Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Chihiro talk about it, right? Oh, I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't that strong. Um, like the six foot woman next to you would beg to differ. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about it, that stuff. Because she was complex. I can't help wondering what it might be. Hmm. Kyoko, I'd rather talk to you than Byakuya right now. She took her time examining Chihiro's corpse. She poked and prodded and going over every inch of the lifeless body. Hmm. You're a very strange woman, you know, being able to touch a dead body with absolutely no trouble. She seems to be concentrating pretty hard. It's like she can't even hear us.
I could feel the life draining out of my own body. It's a dead body. It's a hero's dead body. Very strange. The more I look, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide Jack's handiwork. Is that how you spell a handiwork with an, with an eye? Well, but... What? Was it a short... Sorry, I had to yawn for a second. But we're still not sure she he did it. Is that what you want? To, is that what you want to say? <laughs> I wonder about that. <laughs> ah, Briakia, what do you have to say? <laughs> you have time to talk. You have time to start investigating. I'll go. F fuck yourself. Take the bloodless sign again. Uh, I'm hmm. Oh, God, that's what that's what did it. There's a dumbbell on the floor, and this is a blood stain. There's a blood stain on the dumbbell. The one who come across it that blows the head with a blunt object is what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder weapon? That's right. I'd imagine it could have been anything else. I believe it's about, it's about time for us to move on. Uh-huh. Already? What? New clues don't magically appear by standing around here. We need to check every aspect of this case. Well, that's true, but... Let's go. If you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. He's so... pushy. I got caught up with the wrong person this time. What else is there to look around for here? So this is our, our next location. Huh? This place is way to the investigation. Figure it out for yourself. It's not fun if you don't. If it's not fun if you don't, right? Ah, oh, man. Hate him. I'm gonna save real quick. I don't remember if it did last time, but when the last investigation started, I don't remember exactly if I had to go and start it myself or we just jumped into it. But let me. I'll just save real quick. Just, just to. So I'm not caught off guard. What is there to look at? There's a bunch of different pull weighted items on the shelf, which have nothing to do with the case. Let's go into the boys' locker room for a quick. Let's, let's see what we can find. Hmm. Let's even see the crime I idiot. There's nothing with the gun. That's something that that's the only thing here that I can really look at. Maybe this gun was used to. No, impossible. That would shoot your hero would be riddled with holes. The life um, preserver? A flotation donut. I don't think it's related to the lab of Chihiro. No, oh, got a coin. Was it? There, that's what it was. This thing here that can tell you what you can examine. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work without with our handbooks, right? What? Do you have any issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? No. Oh, fuck me. Yes, I did. Sort of. Has he been domesticated? That's right. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure. What's up? Um, well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yes, the card readers have all been designed to interface with each of your e-handbooks. You can only enter the locker room co corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. Is that right? Right. It's just that that one section of the sentence is now highlighted. I think I was right about Chihiro actually being a guy. That might have something to do with it. And it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? Is that right? If there's some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl... 
The Ceiling Mountain Gatling Gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter. Hmm. And the school regulations prohibit anyone from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Of course! Correctly correct! So then... That means only girls can go in the locker rooms. In the girls' locker room, and then boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Shihua's body being found in the girls' locker room means... Hey, Makoto. I can see right through you. See right through me. Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Shihiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So, in other words... As such, the killer must, must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Such ignorance. Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? You should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Learning an e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. True, but, but if, they, if they were out there at 2 a.m., would Monokuma even see it? Is he, is he actually watching 24-7? He probably is, to be honest, but like... But he didn't... But he didn't see... Mondo and, and Taka in the sauna all for, for 24 hours. I mean, specifically, it said that sleeping anywhere other than dorms is prohibited. And look at the handbook again, actually, because it... That, that, maybe have been, that may have been a loophole so they can stay in the sauna for all that time, but... I don't know. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. What about stealing it? Hmm. I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So you managed to sniff out the loophole in the regulations. Hmm. Knowing you, I bet you created, on, created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. Yeah You're treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. Now then, because the dead can't actually talk, they're not people anymore. They're things. Yep. Get it? Got it? Good. Master of Disguise? Hmm. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole? But in order to borrow someone thing if we order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it. So uh Who are you? So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Byakuya Byakuya and Ugh. Ah! That... Funny. Or else I'll charge you with criminal negligence. No more questions. Figure out, figure out the rest of your own damn self. That's fine. Well, I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental faculties. So I'll fill you in. Myself. Fine, Ryakia. Let's head to the main hall. The main hall? I hope you understand what's going on. Card reader has been added to the truth bullets. Book. We came to the main hall. So, what are we looking for here? Yes. Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? I'm gonna save it again. Did I save correctly? Alright, whatever. <sighs> what am I looking at now? That's a there's a mailbox here. Could be something inside, as I'm thinking. It's an e handbook. Three of them? Or was, it, or was that all for one e handbook? Oh, there are three of them. Uh, no, wait. There's three of them. What are they doing here? Hmm. So, you finally found them. Uh huh? Did you know these were here, Byakuya? <laughs> I happened to find them by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So, so does that mean that whoever killed her took Sayaka's or the other girl's handbook and followed hero into the girl's locker room? 
So then these three handbooks belong to Junko, Leon, and Sayaka. Hmm. You can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks. And when I did, Sayaka's right. Yep. You're right. This is Sayaka's handbook. Hmm. Now do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah. I feel like I'm starting to get it. You should pay close attention to the regulations. Dance has been in front of you the entire time. Loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. Right. I see. Yeah, now I understand. What? Hmm? Hold on a second. What's wrong? Very strange. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Juko's name when I started it up. Then that one won't turn on with the Leon's, right? Did he have it on him when, when he was just hit with that barrage of, of, of baseballs? Did it break in his pocket or something? I see. It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Yeah. Pummeled with baseballs. Oh, you want to live that? The memory of it came flooding back. The cruel punishment which led to Leon's death. The execution that, that, that the mastermind concocted. A cruel, heartless death. You're right. It wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Damn it. Hey, hey! Hey, 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 hey. Angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. Now I'm really angry. Okay. What? That e-handbook is essential to student life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. That's impossible. If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break. I can't withstand up to it can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure. And it's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but uh even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does. But it's a secret. I wouldn't want you to go breaking any more handbooks. What? Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hmm. Hard to say. You know what I think? I think his handbook isn't actually broken. Wah -wah? But you might ask, how could that be? Leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken. But it's an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. Do they run on batteries? Is, the, is, the, is, is it not charged up or something? That's fine. I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. Broken in handbook. Maybe it's dead. Like it has to actually be charged up or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay then. This should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah. We need to find out who killed Chihiro. Hm. To be exact, not quite. Huh? Not quite. Alright, what else now? Surveillance camera. And this, and this what I can only assume is a gun attached to it. So chilling. How come metal block at the entrance seems like some kind of machine? Mm. Something else, so wait. Oh, well. I thought this control panel was could be 
examined. This one here. Ah, uh, Biakia. You're the only one person I can talk to right now. What do you mean by that, Biakia? To be exact, not quite. Hmm. Certainly I want to reveal Chihiro's killer, but more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then, you really think... You truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that, that killed Chihiro? Don't make me repeat myself. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that, Genocide... I have no doubt about... Jesus. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. That murderous fiend is... Genocide Jack, right? What? There's nobody else who could be. A murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost attacking. They're like a ghost. Attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. Let's say he's killed thousands of people. That's gotta be an urban legend. Still. Can one of us really be a demented, psychotic killer like that? You're not wrong to wonder. But words mean little right now. I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. Okay. Ah. Huh. I have a basis to believe that I. I assure you, Justin Jake is one of us. Is there really proof? But somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence you need. It's all clear now. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro. Evidence. Does something like that really... Ah! Hey, you two! Big trouble. Need your help. Oh, Christ, what is it now? I don't have time to play with you. <laughs> We're busy. Leave us alone. I mean... But it's an emergency. Emergency! Come on, please, you gotta help me. What, is it Toko? Please! This is a serious emergency. Please, please, you gotta help me. Just calm down, okay, Hina? I mean... But, but, it's an emergency! Alright, what, what's going on then? An emergency, what happened? Well... Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she's acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Byakuya? Very strange. This is Toko, I must admit. I am intrigued. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. There you go. I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd just say no and that'd be the end of it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Come on, hurry. Wait for us, Hina. Let's go. Let's actually head toward to the dorms, to, to Toko's room, most likely. You're right. No! God! You guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. Hmm. So, what's this emergency? So, um... I wonder what happened in the ghost locker room. We dropped Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, she came back to... We came back to check on her. You know, see how she was doing. But when we did... Hmm. It was weird. She refused to come out, and she kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff? That's fine. We should try talking to her ourselves. Better watch out, Bialkia. Yeah, good idea. Hmm. Hurry up and do it. So, Let's try um... talking to Toko again. Alright. Yeah. I'm hmm. saving once again. Might as well give it a shot. The door swung open slowly and silently. That's not swinging open then. It's opening slowly and silently, not swinging open. Ugh. Holy crap. An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. What? Oh, uh. Nothing. It's just that 
Akina was really worried about you, pulling yourself up in your room. Leave me here alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But could you open up just for a second? Won't allow it. Huh? Won't let Genocide Jack have control. So she is Genocide Jack. I'm guessing it's some sort of multiple personal personal. Multiple personality disorder personality disorder. Which I actually heard is not an actual definition that they use anymore. I forget what I, it's disassociative identity disorder, I think is what it's called. Yes, I was right. And just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? Hmm. She's been acting like that the whole time. When I rang a little while ago. Great use of, of just, of assets. Great reuse, I should say. I'll drive out the, the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. She wants to purge herself with Genocide Jack's influence. It doesn't make any sense, right? I was trying to leave her in, in there alone, so I tried to bust down the door. Really. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Toka was scared enough to even bar her own door. Bar her door? Does she think the same thing as Byakuya? Does she think the serial killer Genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Is that why Toko's so scared? She knows he killed her. Oh, she killed her. But... Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Hifumi? No, she hates Hifumi. Well, Byakuya himself, actually. Hey, Byakuya, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean. That's fine. Sure, whatever. Really? Huh? You gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Byakuya stood in front of her door, not making a sound, and pressed the doorbell. After a few moments. What do you want? Leave me alone. You're all so annoying. Ah. Bakula, Bakula. It's Byakuya. Yes. I'm sorry. I couldn't keep our prom. What? What promise? But don't worry. Never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. And with that, the door slammed shut. Hmm. Even Byakuya couldn't pull it off. Hmm. There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. Hold on! Hey, Byakuya, what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Hmm? Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. Did the two of you actually know each other from outside of the school? Is that what she's talking about? Do you... Hmm. I'm gonna say, does Byakuya actually know that she's Genocide Jack? Or does he walk alongside Genocide Jack outside the school? Just his personality and everything, I don't know. But... Stop talking. If I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well then, let's go. Without waiting for a reply, Byakuya sped away. Byakuya! And I hurried to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked. But he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept walking toward his, just, his destination. Finally, his feet brought him to, to a stop in front of a certain room. The, the library? Yeah. Hmm. Come on, let's go in. This is agonizing. 
something tells me Byakuya actually knows Toko from outside the school. That, that's probably why she's so obsessed with him or something. Maybe? Maybe they know each other personally, but maybe they've met at least. Um, is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me repeat myself. Yeah. Oh, I have to look again. There's no point in checking there. We need to find real clues. Yeah, got a coin. Go through the door then, I guess. If I remember, on the other side of this door, it's the archive, right? Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here? Let's go. It all makes sense once you're inside. Will it though? Whoa, there's so many books. There's so many books and files. Yeah, so and so, like the other room has the same thing, dude. And so much dust too. So in other words, I would say there's enough value in this place to to endure the dust. Huh? It's a dust lamp. I was like, I mean, for the books, but yeah, dust lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Byakuya using in the library before. What is it? I thought I was paying close enough attention. I thought wasn't the desk lamp still in the other room though? What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before that I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. No, there's no problem. There's a wooden box. It's empty. Although judging by the smudges and the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. Hmm. There was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful while I was in the library. An extension cord, huh? What was Chihiro tied up with? I thought it was rope, but... Extension cord, maybe? Considering he said, like, this place has the, um, the evidence necessary to prove, prove it was Genocide Jack. And I'm just tossing ideas around again. There's a ton of thick files stuffed, on, stuffed onto the bookshelf. <laughs> if you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic, disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal, any normal person would never want to look at. Be careful. Huh? What do you mean? What do you think? What do you... Exactly what he just said, you idiot. All those files are investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for police eyes only. Not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh? Hmm. That's investigation reports. Okay. <laughs> the filter... Okay, so can I look at them now? Ah. <laughs> okay, so good. Okay, still want to look at it though, so can I look at it? Ah. I guess what am I looking at then? Let me see the files that, that I'm... There's so many files stuck into the shelf. What's in all these things? That's enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like members of the diet or something? The what? No. I mean the ones with the real power with real power. The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. What the Illuminati? If, if you're ready to be, to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. You're just kidding, right? Hm. Am I? I'll, I'll just let it go for now. This shelf, shelf is stuffed tight with files. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Hm. Ah. You have a sharp eye, indeed, just like that file. Huh? That's right. 
That's the report on a presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It won't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? He just loves his secrets. There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. I'm not making a sound, I return the file to the shelf. Hmm. So, if I'm beginning to understand the true splendor of this library, the entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. Hmm. Interesting. It's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such ignorance. That's your guy's problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not that. It's just... It's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but... I mean, there's just so much. How can anyone have all, put all this together? Hmm. I suppose it d goes to show just how much hopes people truly... How much... How much... Okay. I suppose it goes to show just how much Hope's Peak truly wields. Or perhaps, <laughs> the Mastermind may have wanted us to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Maybe for you. I don't know why anyone else has the same mindset as you. Um, it's no use. I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. Hmm. What's wrong? You still can't believe it? I know any of this is actually real, though. That all these documents aren't forged. What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. What? What do you mean, usually? Usual? Normal? Ordinary? Simple? Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they actually, what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't... You don't pull your punches, do you? <laughs> Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? What makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? <sighs> the, the documents gathered here are genuine. I reviewed them multiple times, so there was no doubt. Now, hold on a second. You're saying you've read all of these documents and more than once? But all this has to be like top secret confidential stuff, right? So why, why is it here in, the, in a school for one thing? Hmm. My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Oh, it's just bigger, of course. And not as dusty. Oh, yes, of course it is. Just have to make yourself just feel so superior, don't you? Huh? Hmm. Members of the Togami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. Why, though? That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. How is that possible? So, in other words... I already told you. There's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. My family is a member of that council. Why would you know this, though? Some 16-year-old kid. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I'll have to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt, but the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Biakia is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through those reports have al has always been a hobby of mine, ever since I was little. It's excellent, it's excellent m mental exercise. I've solved more than a few cases that just just by reviewing these reports. The reports. And moving and among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Byakia grabbed a specific file from the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack cases have been compiled from here. Hmm. Because there's so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, 
The bodies are suspended in, certain, in a certain way. Bloodlust is written in blood and the victim's body is suspended. It's exactly the same as what happened to Chihiro. <laughs> Save your surprises. The best part is yet to come. Hmm. The second characteristic where the victims are suspended. The only ones who know about it, about that particular fact, are members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? Hmm. In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about the aspect of each crime. Only key officials in the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you recall, Chihiro's corpse, hmm. her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. So... How could the killer have known about spending, suspending the victim? Because it's Genocide Jack, you dummy. That's what he's explaining. I mean, if he... If Jack had turned out to be wrong about all this, I mean, whatever, but... He's explaining why he does think it is Genocide Jack. That's right. That's the key question. But in fact, the answer is quite simple. So, in other words... The culprit isn't a copycat. The culprit isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. Yeah. In other words... That right there is the evidence that Genocide Jack is, has hidden himself among the rest of us. Then Genocide Jack really is... Such a brutal, fiendish killer that really is walking around among us. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? I never imagined a killer with such a reputation would ever become part of our little game. Now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. Such ignorance. If you get down by on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Yeah, I'll do that. Just tell me. Um, Byakia, about that genocide jack file, a case file. Could you let me see it? That's fine. Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Feel free to look at it in here, but you can't take it with you. Oh boy, what is this scene? Byakuya handed me the file and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly my hand stopped. I had reached the page where photos from the scene of each crime had all been collected. Ugh. The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. Ken Harada, Ops Local 32. The murder, the murder took place in the parking lot of the Digital Apartment Complex. This was stabbed across the fire and took the symptoms that were created to the wall. Once he's in scissors. Ken Harada, 32. Tetsuhiro Honda, 17. Shoji Gaku, 23. Kano Issei, 14. Takashi Yoshida, 30. Oh, Takashi Yoshida? What's it? Was? Komatsuna Taro, Takafumi Gono, Uchida Naoshiro, uh, Naohisa, rather. Takashi Masamune, Yuto Yumejima. There was no end to it. One thing came, became perfectly clear as I read. All the killer's victim, countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodless was left in the victim's own blood. Hmm. Now take a look at the next page and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page? Same angle again, but okay. Profiling with results. All the crimes took place either on weekdays and at night or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killings took place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. Eh, it's kind of a um, stretch to, to think that. Evidence suggests that the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, 
It's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior suggests the suspect may potentially suffer from disassociative, disassociative identity disorder, which is why I said before. Yeah, it's it's Toko. So in other words, the key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. A split personality? Well, the kind of thing you see on TV and in movies. Some part of another totally unbelievable story. This one is way more unbelievable than anything else up until now. Or maybe it really isn't. I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Let's go. All right, we should get going soon. Huh? Or where are we going? Hmm. Anywhere but here. We finished. We finished our business here, haven't we? Ah, wait, Biakia. As usual, Biakia turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. Hmm. Well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have time to play with you. Come on. Enough of your annoying misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he'd asked me to join him, he'd cut me off. In the end, I felt like I, I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I didn't cover some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack. He's the one that killed Chihiro. And that murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find that out, no matter what it takes. It's Toko. And to do that, there's someone I have to go investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene. The girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room, too. And the others might have to come up with some... And the others might have come up with some info I might find useful while I'm at it. I need to find out everything that I can. Yes, I do. This is just... gets more and it just keeps going and going, doesn't it? It's insane. Well, there's more to investigate. But we'll investigate more next time. And hopefully we can get the next trial going as soon as possible. So until then, I'll talk to you guys later.